before those stands fill up. And Norfolk Island, a big shock. Coming into the semi-final against the Stars from Scotland. And I have to give it to Norfolk Island. They haven't done it easy. They've managed to come through. Very tough little section. The players are just waiting for all the other rinks to complete their trial ends. 24 degrees and it's just coming up to 9 o'clock. Humidity, 83%. It felt a bit like that as well, Shuri, didn't it? Rained overnight as well, David, so it is pretty steamy at the moment, early in the morning, but the conditions are great. Norfolk Island, Phil Jones, Hayden Evans, Ryan Dixon. There we see how this section of the group went with for them. Three wins, good win over Northern Ireland, and uh, as expected over Cook Islands, they were good there. They lost heavily to Malaysia, but look at that massive, massive quarter final. Good grief. Two wins in the section play, two losses they got through on count back on that one. But that's really an amazing win they had over the very star studded England triple. Biggest result ever for Norfolk Island in the sport of bowls. Ronnie Duncan, Derek Oliver, and the Scottish Bobby, and the policeman Darren Burnett. Very powerful lineup, Scotland. They've also uh, played really well throughout. Played a tie there with Malaysia, went down to Norfolk Island, and the quarter final close tussle against Wales. Yes, Norfolk Island one was there, but uh, only lost one match and on the way through. Very confident triple, of course. So there you see it. Norfolk Island beating England, Scotland beating Wales, Canada through Jersey. Jersey triple were absolutely brilliant and Australia got over the Kiwis in the last of the quarterfinals in the men's triples. That must have been an interesting game. I think it's fair to say that Scotland will go into this firm favourites, but after Norfolk Island beating England, they'll, uh, they'll have to concentrate very, very hard. There's nothing given in these matches, even though you might be a star in the sport of bowls. Anything can happen. So we're off and running. Norfolk Island, get the jack away. Philip Jones, known as Phil Jones. Phil is the most experienced of the three players from Norfolk Island. He's been around a long while. Very steady player, Phil Jones. Ronnie Duncan the astrophysicist. The overnight rain would actually help, I think, players from Norfolk Island 
Green Zerk, about the same speed in Norfolk Island as they are here. I've had the benefit of playing with all three players from Norfolk Island and Corky, you've probably played with and against the three Scottish players. Oh, absolutely. Many, many times. And uh... excellent correction from Phil Jones. I know them very well, especially in the home international circuit. Ronnie Duncan, very much a specialist lead. I never really go into his occupation too much. It just sounds very complicated to me. We've had quite a few upsets in this Commonwealth Games and for Norfolk Island to get to the last four, Scotland, Canada and Australia, this is a fantastic performance. Hayden Evans, affectionately known as Teddy. Mm, it's not bad there. It's a bit of a protector. Derek Oliver played against Derek. So he's skipped against him many times in terms of the international team. Played third against him a number of times as well. Nice guy. Good guy to play against. That's I a, call him a very honest sort of player. Yeah, good weight too there, Cork. He's opened the head up, Derek Oliver. I think the advantage is because he's played skip so often, he understands the, the role of the middle man and triples. And you sometimes find, you've probably found this as well, that some players don't understand that role in the middle. They're, they're, they're so actually focused on getting the shot. <laughs> you know, don't right. worry about the shot too much. Hayden Evans is the least experienced of all players on this quarterfinal clash. It might take him a few ends just to settle the nerves. They did uh, meet in sectional play, these two teams, and uh, Scott's won 2011. In the area with this one. Uh, he wants the ball, not the gap. Oh, he's got the ball, and he's got a good position as well. Played beautiful way at the, the weight of these greens are really going to suit the Scottish players as well. Absolutely nothing to be afraid of when it's running at sort of 14 seconds. And of course, all that rain overnight. It'll burn off, but uh, probably not too much over the three hours. We expect this match to last. You know, these guys would have played over here in Australia, I would have thought, quite a lot. Yes, both Phil Jones and Ryan Dixon. The skip from Norfolk Island, Ryan Dixon, he was born in New South Wales. Does have a very powerful drive. He's quite a flamboyant player. He'll be very nervous. First Commonwealth Games. Phil Jones has had one outing for the Com Games, but... Yeah, it's missed the line by a bit of a distance there with the first ball. Ryan Dixon's opposite number, Darren Burnett. He's playing in his fifth Commonwealth Games. Yes, and multiple medal, medal winner as well. Also World Indoor Singles player who's won that title, or World Indoor Tour player who's won that title and the World Pairs. 2002 Manchester singles quarterfinal. 2006 singles finished ninth. Delhi 2010 fourth in the pairs. 2014 Glasgow quarterfinal triples singles gold. Darren Burnett, what a star! Mm, has he got enough of it? Well, it's made a double by the looks of it. That was the same year he won the world indoor. He was actually the Commonwealth Games singles champion and the world indoor singles champion in the one year. So two ball triples, 18 ends. Quite a nice way to play the triples. Quite often we play with three balls, that's the normal, but reduced to two balls, it's a much, much better game, much quicker game. He needs to adjust his uh, line with this.
the backhand in this direction that Ryan is playing is a lot wider than the forehand side. And a lot of late turn. Well, they're waving it. If he's got good weight, he's got a chance. Oh, he didn't reach. Much surprised at that. They're getting nothing for short with two down. I know it's early days, but I was just wondering would he have been tempted to run it, the two balls, but he's only got the one ball in the head, so it wouldn't have been worth it. In the meantime, Darren Burnett, well, he's got a chance to add a third. Policeman from our Arbroath. Open draw through the gap on the forehand. And just the pace was the problem, the line was good. Scotland off and running with a double. Scotland have so many top players to choose from. Ronnie Duncan very much a specialist lead and he was certainly in against some very good players for his spot. He's more than justifying it though. A three colored ball, the trifecta ball. Just hard enough to watch those going down the green. Very difficult uh, when you're standing behind the head to, to try to figure out exactly where the ball's going to stop. Yeah, it's hard to read the pace of them. The Scotland have the blue discs on their bowl, there's blue stickers and Norfolk Island have the red stickers, so we we'll have to try and keep an eye out. The right stickers for the right <laughs> teams. Shuri, what's going on? Well, you know, <laughs> the, the number of colours available for bowls now, it's like a box of Smarties. I mean, there's all colours, and uh, you know, wouldn't it have been good to have Scotland with uh, six blue bowls and Norfolk Island with six green bowls? White bowls? Oh, no. steady yourself. Let's not bring common sense into it. Two down here, Phil. I mentioned that Phil Jones is the most experienced player. He had the shot on the first end and a very good correction, just overweight. So I think it's important for Norfolk Island if they have any chance at all of winning this quarterfinal clash. Phil Jones, well, I think, would have to play the game of his life. Well, not only that, but it's... Uh... They'll have to think about their tactics. If they're not putting balls in the head, they need to attack and to make sure that they shake up the Scottish triple. And they can all draw very, very well, the Scots, and uh, Darren Burnett's a very good shot player. He doesn't have a big drive, but in comparison to some people, but he certainly is very accurate with it. And his delivery is quite unique, but we'll talk about that later. I don't know, you'll get into that a bit. Very different, let's put it that way. <laughs> I've been critical of his <laughs> technique, but not of the person. He's a wonderful guy, oh, Teddy. That's a good bowl from Hayden Evans. Less than 2,000 people, the population of Norfolk Island. And that will settle a few nerves. Yeah, I wouldn't mind six months coaching in Norfolk Island during our winter. That would do well. Beautiful. Had a couple of uh, coaching trips over there, Corky, and it's a beautiful place if you want to unwind and relax and very historic. Well, he's down on a decent line with this if it just needs to run. Two good bowls, yep. first and third shots. 
Very good bowling from Hayden Evans. He'd be so nervous. It's just a sleepy little island, <laughs> Norfolk Island, to come to the well, Gold Coast. Commonwealth yeah. Games, the pressure is immense. Uh, there's only one bowling club in Norfolk Island with a couple of greens. Greens won quite well, actually, but this is a different stage today. Maybe they're so laid back, they won't feel the pressure. Well, there's always that side of it. You've played with a few guys like that, I'm sure, in competitions <laughs> where you sort of think, are they ever going to waken up? But they, they know what they're doing. Darren Burnett, he's chasing it. Close. Well, I guess past that one, he's in, into it. Yeah, oh. got it. And that, that's where the thing is with balls in the head, and that's where Scotland will just take the opportunity, try and convert heads. Maximum degree of difficulty. Went so close to the front bowl with perfect weight. Turns it out for one, maybe two. That was an absolutely brilliant bowl from Darren Burnett. The guys at the front end are uh, very easy to play with as well. You know, Darren's got a very nice triple here to, to work with. I think um, Ryan Dixon is very methodical the way he goes about the pre-shot routine. You just see he's moving, move that mat just a millimetre to get it square. I think he needs to, when he's down, he, as you mentioned before, Corky, I think he'll need to drive bowls out of the head, not play delicate shots like we just saw from Burnett. It's not his game. It's not his strength. His strength is his drive. Well, the target for Norfolk Island will be to keep things as tight as possible in the first four or five ends. watch this delivery everything's fine and then the head goes down and comes up he's almost looking at the ground whenever he delivers the ball that's contrary to e almost everything that you would be taught but the end result is absolutely brilliant at times it really is like Darren amazed me from the first time I've seen him you know as a coach you're looking at those things here and saying wow that's different <laughs> he doesn't doesn't stay on the mat follows off staggers off the mat and he's got a great sense of humor like all the Scots have to come back I don't think on that backhand side that's the narrower of the two sides yeah I think he was so in between trying to draw it and making sure he was arriving you know it's um he had a good plant shot on there his own ball wasn't going out of the head but uh, I think he was being careful it was just the one shot in it so steady stuff 3-0 after two ends long way to go in this men's triples semi-final. Well, Ronnie Duncan, he's had a brain snap there. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's just embarrassed, put the hand up and said to Darren Burnett, sorry, oh, next one will be better. He's gone four <laughs> metres over. Uh, oh, so, <laughs> don't know what happened there. I think that one just got out of the traps a bit quick. <laughs> That's all. The, uh, the mat is one metre up and the jack's two metres from the tee. So it's a 31 metre length, but Ronnie Duncan's first bowl was about 35 metres away from the mat. We'll see a big correction here. Yep, there's the correction. And just as well. <laughs> Back in the team. <laughs> yep. Skip's happy.
needs to hold. Yeah, still useful balls though. Always handy just behind the jack. I think about Scotland and they really are a powerhouse team. You know, it's a, a very solid, very successful triple. And then you look at their pair and you go, <laughs> hello, there's going to be medals coming, isn't there? Paul Foster, Alex Marshall, best pair in the world at the moment. And uh, I've had them a couple of games and uh, they are simply sensational the way they're playing. Well, Teddy's not too happy with this bowl. He's put it out too wide. It's all about getting bowls in the head early in two bowl triples. I quite like this discipline, I have to say, with the two balls. I pretty much don't enjoy the three ball triples. There's too many balls for me. You just thrash into heads and there's 16, 17 balls up there. Yes, in social bowls, a lot of the players like three bowl triples. I think the first one's a bit of a sighter. <laughs> you get your second and third a little bit closer, but two bowl triples, you are really penalised as a team if um, you're not drawing well. It's a draw game. Yeah, it's a more pure game. I don't know about that. Well, Teddy's played one on the forehand. He was too wide. Now he's switching to the backhand. This is the wider drawing side. Well, if he's got the running, he's okay, but it looks like it's pulling up well short. And this is where the problems will really start to begin. Yes, he's about three metres short there. Hayden Evans. Beautiful sunny morning here at Broad Beach. Fantastic venue for international standard greens. I have to say, if you can't play good balls here, you really are in bother. Because it doesn't get any better anywhere else in the world. And with the overnight rain, the green's just playing at about 14 seconds. And that's uh, for our non-bowling viewers. It's not a fast green, but it's certainly not slow. It's just a, a really kind speed that allows all players to play a variety of weights. On a fast green, you generally just draw or drive. But on this pace green, you can rest a bowl with a metre or two of weight. You can draw a lot easier. And of course, the drive shot is still on. We haven't seen a drive yet in this match and the way it's going, we may not. Although I could probably see Darren Burnett sitting one Norfolk bowl out of the head for a big count at some stage. If they're not going to draw more than one or two in the head, Well, they're interested in this one. Got his own ball on the way in. Has it going to fall kindly? It hasn't fallen. But he's opened up the gap to get to Phil Jones's bowl, which is the striped bowl. So at the moment, it's only one to Scotland, but Ryan Dixon desperately needs another bowl close. You're not needed too much. All the balls are up. <laughs> Just try and draw a shot. He's got a very long pre-shot routine, Ryan Dixon. Oh, he's having a drive. He's only got one bowl in the head. Not a bad tactic. Quite oh. like it. Oh, oh, he's got fresh air now. Me. Is there a Norfolk Island Look, bowl worth of... Well, that yeah. was the last bowl of the end, and it, I think that's a good tactic. There's only one down. He's very close as well, watching it all the way. Yeah, see, he stayed away from his closest ball on the forehand <laughs> just as well. There's only one shot. I think they need to do that a bit earlier, though, if it starts to build up. You know, don't leave it to the last ball. Yeah. You know, try and uh, shake up the Scottish triple because 
A bit of a steamroller outfit. Just these three guys just making the semi final. I mean, should almost declare a public holiday in Norfolk Island. Like, they will be absolute heroes when they get home. They haven't been beaten yet in this match. They're expected to go down to Scotland, but to get to the last four in a Commonwealth Games is incredible. Oh, absolutely. You know, the population of Norfolk Island is a, is a decent sized village back in the UK. And. Uh, and they don't get any really tough competition. Yep. yep. And to come here on, you know, greens that are almost like a billiard table to play on, it requires so much skill and just touch to draw well. Wonderful correction there from Ronnie Duncan. needs to run. I think Scotland will be just waiting for two or three ends where they can start to group the balls. They're probably thinking the big count will arrive. It's just a matter of when. His weight was good. Certainly went to pressure on Scotland, of course. When they, this draw came out, they'd have been thinking to themselves, you know, that would be a, a wonderful opportunity. But Norfolk Island beat England, and goodness me, I don't know what the conversation was last night in the camp, but it must have been just difficult enough. Wouldn't have uh, liked to have been a player at the debrief, the team debrief there. England uh, would be expecting medals in just about every event. And to, you know, to go down to Norfolk Island is, uh, well, I think it's a, just a tremendous performance from, for Norfolk Island. And at the moment, they're holding the one. Aidan Evans just trying to pop another one in. Good first ball. Gets the ball away very smoothly. Seems to have a wider drawing bowl than the other players. Late turn. Yep, another one in there. That's exactly what they need to do. Might see some weight now from Burnett. That uh, really pyramid of bowls there. Those three bowls will all go. Yeah, interesting choice here because at 14 seconds they can play the conversion shots with just a, a meter or two. This would have been running at 18 seconds much quicker. It would have just driven them out. Yep, good positive arriving weight. Well, they're interested. I think he could have done with just a little bit more. Yes, I did. I just think you know, on a holding green when you one, maybe two down, I thought Darren would have played a lot more weight to that head. Now he's made it a lot more difficult. His own bowl is blocking access to the head now. So an opportunity here for Norfolk Island to uh, get on the scoreboard. Ryan Dixon will play the backhand. Colourful shirts, colourful outfit. Quite like that, actually. I think it looks really neat. Yes, the Norfolk Pine on the back. Some of the best sunsets in the world. Norfolk Island just needed an ounce more weight. 
Now, how much weight does Burnett play here? Well, he's got a problem ball at the front, and that's his own. You're selling this Norfolk Island to me, sure you? Know, you obviously got it worked out with a tourist board. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've taken a few bowling groups over to Norfolk Island and uh, for coaching and tournaments, and it's uh, been there quite a few times. And... Well, I think Darren Burnett will play a lot more weight here, Corky. Well, there's right. nothing to stop him, really. Yeah. Good not positive weight. A little bit quicker, but not much. He's looking at his own ball on the inside here. Yep, he's got it. Oh, it's oh, a cruel oh, game. Wow. That's... Uh, <laughs> yep. OK, move on. Say nothing. Yeah, you know, it's good to see the guys weren't running down and high-fiving him for that. And that, that's good because he was well off target. Well, he wasn't well off target, but... It was an absolute you know, fluke. It was just an... And yep. as you said, Corky, they didn't carry on. They didn't high-five. They didn't cheer. They didn't no. clap. Probably Darren Burnett would have apologised to Ryan Dixon on the crossover. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Good sportsmanship. A lot of players really yahoo a shot like that, but it was an absolute fluke. He's going to have to drive them out. No choice. Yep, straight up the line. All three will go. Um, I think that's what Hayden's saying. He takes a very deliberate in his decision-making, Ryan Dixon. There's really only one shot. Well, there's two shots on. There's a forehand draw oh, coming in yeah. from top left. You'd get that one in 50. You might get it twice in 50, Corky. But I think <laughs> Ryan, Ryan would uh, be well advised to... Just play his own natural aggressive game. Yeah. Straight up the line. Listen, to me, that's not a decision to be made. And the more conversation you have with your teammates, yep. the more doubt you have in your own mind. Yeah. Well, he doesn't look confident. He's I'm looking doing, at other matches. It just goes down. He should be looking at the mat and thinking, yep. what line am I going to take? What weight am I going to use? Yep. He's looking all around him. He should stride to the mat, pick up the bowl, get a good firm grip and let it rip right up the centre line. Well, I'm going to start his process now. Should be a little bit of an arm swing. Yep, there it is. Well, he's in the area. Oh, very unlucky. Ooh, yeah. Played the right shot. Yeah. Three shots confirmed for Scotland, four and seven nil, courtesy of that fluke by Darren Burnett with his last ball. A very good start for Scotland in the semi-final. Double, single, single, treble. Norfolk Island still to get on the card. I'm just picking up a little bit of wind or something that way because Ronnie Duncan's pushed his first ball through again. A little bit shorter this end. The match is one metre up. And Jack's about six metres off the tee. It's about 27 metres. It's just a comfortable length, but as you said, Ronnie was a couple of metres overweight. Good start from Phil Jones. He's got the line this time. Darren's waving it up. He's overcorrected. Very deliberate 
Phil Jones checks the bias, <laughs> has a oh. couple of practice swings, settles himself. So, oh. Sometimes the longer you spend with your pre-shot routine, the more difficult the game is. Mm. It's always good to check the bias, though. I like that. It was a very deliberate twist of the ball. How many wrong passes have we seen going down with players being a bit nervous, maybe? Yeah, it should be a compulsory part of the pre-shot routine. When you're about to stand on the mat, or once you're on the mat, check that you've got the right bias. And when we talk about bias, that's about the, the ball is just slightly straighter on one side than it is the other, and it allows the ball to bend. We have seen one wrong bias in the Commonwealth Games. And Carmen Anderson from Norfolk oh, Island in the seriously? singles played a wrong bias. Oh. The very experienced Carmen Anderson. This is a good bowl. That's a very good bowl. Yep, I'm very pleased there. So Norfolk Island holding three. They really do need to get on the scoreboard. It'd be fantastic for them if they could pick up a multiple. Well, that's not a bad ball there, actually. It just edged off the front one. Just going back to the bias a minute, I always like to give the crew something to think about, Chewy, and uh, when was bias invented, or how was it invented? There you go. If you, get the, if you get the right century, I'll be impressed. I'll let that one hang for a while. So when was bias invented in the game of bowls? That's when a bowl goes from the bending, instead of just going straight, as it did right at the start. Like Bocci. Touch of the jack would be good. But just needs to avoid the Scottish bowl coming in. He must keep off the blue bowl. Oh, that's a very good couple of bowls from Hayden. Teddy Evans. So Ryan Dixon will be hoping that... Uh, he well, there's a little shot here. It's available to him just down on the inside. If he wants to play it. Yeah, Darren Burnett looks for these shots. No good positive weight. Two balls will go if he comes down on the inside. He's just looking at the angles there. He's looking at the high side, but really it's underneath he wants. The reason he'll play controlled weight through this head is because he has multiple options of, for success. Rather than just trying to dead draw, which is just one option, he'll play three or four metres through the head. He's got two short Scottish bowls coming in. He can land the shot bowl, get the jack, or just reduce the count. So there's three or four options with weight. Well, he's on the backhand by the looks of it for a bare jack. Oh, oh another lucky goodness result. me. Wow. The Norfolk Island will be starting to think, what is going on here? I thought it was luck of the Irish. No, but... we didn't have any luck if you looked at our history. <laughs> <laughs> but what an absolute uh... lucky result that was once again for Darren Burnett. But your luck starts when you reach the head. Well, that's a couple of drives that have been slightly off, but have managed to get a result. Plenty of room now. Ryan Dixon will have two attempts at this jack on the tee, 34 metres away. Very unusual follow through. Well, he's out on a decent line here. Just has to make it all the way back to the tee. Wanting to get a good first ball in. Mm, that's not bad. It's beatable, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's very close with this. Got a big edge help, but that didn't really matter. It was That just brought him in a little bit closer. If he missed that, he was just behind the jack. He was definitely drawing the shot no matter what. But I, don't, uh, I don't think Ryan Dixon's going to draw the shot. Have a look how close it finished. Maybe a drive at once again straight up the centre line. I don't think he could possibly draw the shot. Well, he's on the forehand. He must be able to see an edge of it. 
So, uh, oh, he's... well, he has to go quick because that's a very narrow port to get through. Tell you what, he's in the area for this ball. Oh, that's a great shot. That is a brilliant ball. Now the question is, what's it worth? Shot of the match, Ryan Dixon, plenty of speed through the gap and got the Darren Burnett bowl into the ditch, which is a dead bowl. It did not touch the jack. The jack comes back on the tee, one to Norfolk Island. So they're on the card, off and running, Norfolk Island. Check of the bias again as Phil Jones prepares to get underway for the start of the sixth end. Six behind after five ends. Oh, that's a disappointing opening bowl. Oh, three metres short. It's a dangerous length, isn't it? Well, at least they've changed the length. They've brought the mat up six metres. On a 28 metre length but a disappointing opening bowl from phil jones uh, ronnie duncan's definitely more comfortable in this direction phil's had enough of the backhand <laughs> he's, just, he's not taking a risk and crashing on his first bowl so he's pulled the switch to the forehand side Looks better. Well, they started clapping that way, way short. They knew about six yards before that that was close. Well, that's going to open it up a little bit. Two good balls, Ronnie Duncan. It's an interesting piece of uh, jewelry around his neck. Oh, that might be a shark tooth. Oh, well, he's going to lose this in the ditch. He had to be up, though, because he knows that Scotland will be attacking. So no good dropping short now, whether you're holding or behind on the head. And Scotland, one down, but have three seconds. A little shake of the hand there from, <laughs> from uh, Teddy Evans and... Well, I'm not convinced about this one either. It's going to be very close to the edge of the ditch. Mm, he's lost it. Now they're in trouble. One very short ball, one line the shot. Scotland wasting no time to get rid of the ball. He's got it. That's going to go all the way in the ditch. The like two or three shots, and it's going to be very hard to beat as well. It's probably about uh, 14 inches away. Good bowl there, hits the jack, which is called a toucher for our non-bowling viewers. It remains alive in the ditch. Very happy with that result, Derek Oliver. Good target. Bowl out was worth three. Jack in the ditch was worth two or three. 
But uh, the problem there was Hayden Evans' two balls that ran off the, the green because it just no, they had absolutely no position. Yeah, and Phil Jones was a little unlucky. He had the shot, but it was right alongside the jack, presented a very inviting target. Now, the challenge for Ryan Dixon is to not lose his bowl in the ditch, but draw close enough to only go one down. So mm. draw close. You can see that uh, where the bowl is on the left, the marker and the little yellow marker on the bank is where the jack is in the ditch. So there's a yeah, good indication. The yellow disc is where the jack is. Good ball. Played it well. Just a one in it. Now, tactically, Burnett will probably draw with his first and then drive with, with his last. He may play weight now for the Dixon Bowl, but I think he's good enough to draw it. Now he's going for it. Well, he's trying to put the pressure on early. It looks like he's inside unless he gets the ball onto it. Not this time. It's going to be very hard to draw this shot. It really is, but uh, it's worth giving it a go. Probably lying second and fourth at the moment. Yeah, I really thought Darren Burnett would have tried to draw that. The uh, North... Norfolk Island Bowl is one metre away from the ditch. There's, there's a bit of room. Now, this bowl needs to finish on the green as close as possible to the little yellow marker there on the left. That's where the jack is. No, it's not going to happen. Went in with a bit of pace. Can't imagine Darren driving the ball off. It's only worth one more shot. He well, can draw it. Well... <laughs> I think he should go back to the draw. It's a scoring end. It's just a question whether it's one or two. Well, he's very straight on the mat. Yeah, he's going again. He wasn't angled. Still looks a little bit under, but he's got an edge, and that'll do. That'll make the double. We think it's a, a definite two and a look for three. Quarter ball. After missing the first one, he enjoyed the second. I've called the umpire to do the measuring. So they've taken two out, the toucher in the ditch and the one on the green, the nearest one. So there's two being conceded at the moment. So we're going to need two officials here, so the other officials had to come up from the far end. And you generally, unlike when both jack and bowl are on the green, you go from the jack to the bowl. This way you go from the bowl over the lip of the ditch down to the jack. Yeah, it's a little fishing line. There you go. Get it in there, check it on the other end, get it nice and tight and then lock it off. Another one to Scotland. So it looked like three. Well, three shots confirmed. Scotland just keep adding to their score. Lost a single the last hand. So after six ends. 10-1 for Scotland in the semi-final. It's going a bit true to form. What we would have expected with Norfolk Ireland having their big win over England, that's maybe going to be their final. Yes, Corky, that was their gold medal match to beat England. I would imagine it, 
any time in the future you go into the bowls club at Norfolk Island, there'll be a plaque up there saying we beat England in the quarter final in the Commonwealth Games and men's triples. Yes, if they don't win this, you'd almost like to give them an honorary bronze. Best opening bowl of the match for Rocket Ronnie Duncan. One on, one behind. Yep. Well, he certainly made sure by going deep there, didn't he? About uh, three yards through, but they'll be quite happy with it. No point in putting one beside it. Always a good idea if you've got one on the jack. Very animated, Darren Burnett. Quite a contrast in skipping styles, Darren Burnett and Ryan Dixon. And certainly, Darren Burnett lets his teammates know exactly where he wants the bowl. He's a policeman. <laughs> I should make sure he, everybody knows exactly what he needs. You do what he says or else yep. the truncheon comes out. He's got a great sense of humour, Darren Burnett. So it comes up to the head again, just drawing there, speaking, directing. This is a dream start. Well, not perhaps unexpected, but Scotland just cruising along at the moment. Yes, they're doing everything they need to do under the circumstances, you know, they... The whole point is to keep their form going and let Norfolk Island chase the game. When you start chasing the game on these greens, it's very difficult. Good attempt. Useful ball. Probably takes one off. The thing with the Scottish players is it's very much in the UK that the skip does have a tendency to direct everything and they'll have a conversation about things, but instruction is very, very clear and needs to be. You don't want players coming down and saying, oh, I didn't really know what you wanted. <laughs> no, well, in um, triples and fours, the skips have total control of directing the head. In pairs... A little bit different. It's more 50-50 contribution as what shot shall we play? How do you feel about this? And the lead has a lot more say in pairs than uh, a lead in triples and fours. As you say, when, as soon as you get uh, two or three opinions or conflicting opinions, the poor skip is that confused. He, he won't play well. So you need to have a strong, assertive personality well, he's down looking for this inside line, trying to play off something, if he can. Looking for the ball. Well, oh. I think that's a, not the shot that's really needed. Yeah. They were holding two. Just draw another one. And draw another. <laughs> he's trying to come through the gap and rest Hayden Evans's bowl out of the head. And that's dangerous in itself because if he's a little bit narrow, makes contact with a shot bowl, he could go from two up to one down. This is the same type of shot that Ryan Dixon should be playing, as we just saw from Burnett. Mm. Making an effort with this one, very close to it. Oh, he's got his own, oh, <laughs> wow. Hmm, he has to reach, no doubt about that, but he was very close to resting his own ball out. Burnett should switch to the backhand now yeah. and just beat the Hayden Evans bowl, the black bowl. No good playing, really Hollywood-type shots now. When you're leading 10-1, just keep the game tight. You're holding one, maybe two. Draw on the backhand. Yeah, but I think that's what Derek Oliver's saying. Just leave that big gap there. It's not easy. 
play the backhand, rest onto the back black ball. Yes, well, his body's angled towards the backhand, so they've had their chat. Darren Burnett must be doing well out there because I tell you, they don't get a lot of sun up in Arbroath, I would have thought. Especially not this time of the year, the UK's been suffering. Very, very cold winter. A little bit greedy there, Darren Burnett trying to turn the black bowl over. Hayden Evans' bowl, but instead of just trying to draw. What Ryan Dixon will be trying here is to just, with one metre of weight, make contact with the shot bowl, flop it down onto the jack. The jack goes back half a metre. Oh, he's got more than a metre of running. Well, I think his own ball's pretty safe. He's just trying to make the connection, but there is a big gap there. I think that was a wise move to leave that gap. You know, they don't, they don't need to pick them up in multiples at 10-1, Scotland. They're just looking to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Darren Burnett's encouraging this ball. It's uh, running short. Hasn't played his normal game today, Ronnie Duncan. He's been a little bit wayward, unders and overs. He just hasn't got the speed of the green. Yes, he's normally a lot more consistent. He's been very fortunate that what's coming back at him from the other side hasn't been really good. You've got a lead playing against you that's playing well. It can make life a lot difficult, a lot more difficult. Yeah, Ronnie Duncan's first ball was two metres short of the jack. And then, as you mentioned, Phil Jones hasn't put taken advantage of that loose opening ball. He was three metres away. Phil Jones needing more weight. Correction by both players. Very good correction too from Phil Jones. He's got the shot. Well, again, he's encouraging this ball in. It's probably just going to make it. little cross check of fingers to see who's on. We don't do that in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. We just look at it and hope we get it right. But it seems to be very effective. Yeah, it's not an official way of measuring and it, it is legal. Really doesn't matter to this head whether you're up or down. It's really an open backhand draw shot. Oh, it's narrower this time. It's all a matter of just staying up with good weight. Gentle, gentle. Mm, well, it's uh, indication from Darren Burnett that it's okay. Holding the shot. Hayden Evans needs one in here. Oh, he's played Plenty of weight. Big edge would help. 
Oh, that's sneaky. <laughs> we can sort of see it happening, though. <laughs> Big Edge was always there. Mm. They're true the odd edge, aren't they? <laughs> You'd be happy with the result. It was too wide. Inside edge, across there that, onto go. the shot bowls, and flopped down. Lovely. Locked it in. I think they uh, definitely drew the, a little bit of luck back. Chance now. Ryan Dixon, opportunity to draw another shot. Got the spring in the step now. No hurry. He was, just felt like a little run. No time limit on these matches, of course. Well, he's on the forehand. He's on ball on the way in, but uh, could easily have played it. There's a lovely rest on the backhand. I'm not really quite sure about this, but he's played it well. That's what counts. Definite two, and a little look for the third. I thought he might have played it on the backhand, because if he dropped short, he would be forcing Darren Burnett to change. Now you can make the adjustment, line and wait. Big crowd here at Broad Beach. Wind's dying off. Don't think he liked that bold Darren Burnett. He just looked away after releasing that bowl. So opportunity here for Norfolk Island to get a multiple count. Well, it's going to be very hard to remove the blue ball, so uh, just draw another shot. Take right. our chances. Three and a measure for four. Same ball as his last. No yes. conversation needed. No, it's definitely two. And then once you push those two bowls out, you have a look for the third. So no need to change anything from his previous bowl. Forehand draw shot. Got a bit of work to do this one to get back. Just kept it on the high side. Two conceded. Well, played it well with the first ball. Ryan Dixon missed with the second. Good eyesight by Derek Oliver. So he knew it was only the two. So as we commence the ninth end, to go halfway through this final of the men's triples, Scotland in a comfortable 11-3 lead over Norfolk Island. It's been a fairly steady game. There's been the odd very good weight shot played, but generally speaking, it's been a game of just drawing to the jack. There's been too many conversions.
The prize, of course, is a guaranteed silver if you win this match. It's not too often we look at the Commonwealth Games and we see the Norfolk Island flag going up for a potential medal game. Scotland might have been very happy when they saw that England lost to Norfolk Island. But it makes them dangerous. Shows they can more than play the game. Yes, there's no love lost between uh, Scotland and England on the, on the bowling green. <laughs> I'm well, sure the Scots would be very happy that uh, they're not playing England in this match. It's the Kiwis and Aussies, isn't it? Yeah, it's very similar. You know, it's uh, you can have friends in both camps, but the reality is on the green or on the, the playing field, arch enemies. Good ball, played it well. Had some really good shots. Teddy Evans. Derek Oliver down on a slightly narrow line, has to miss the front ball. Well, he's opened the door now on the other side. Only Duncan's got two receiving balls. No reason for Hayden Evans to change. Even if he draws onto his own ball, well, the skips are asking for a bowl just behind and wide, but I think I'd be trying to close that gap off. Contact on his own short bowl would be probably the best result. You cannot leave a head like that for Darren Burnett. May not even have to. I'm sure Derek Oliver will be reaching through here for the shot bowl. Hmm. Missed it on the high side. Let's see if that ball just stays there. Darren Burnett's waving away at that ball at the back of the rink. Try and get it through as far as possible towards the tee. That's where the respot is because there's no dead ends in these matches. And of course we play 18 ends. Oh, the crowd well in for this match. And the others, of course. Semi-final day. Australia represented in other games as well. Only needs to, I think, close the target or open the target. There's no real gap. Only wide, and well, that's a defensive ploy. And I don't think it's. Uh, well, I think Darren Burnett's going to play a lot more weight, David, yeah. to take the two bowls out near the jack, hit the black onto the blue bowl. It's whether the front. He's just asking if the two balls go, who's going to lie the shot? I think that's what they're looking at now. Derek Oliver's just having a look around and. You know, if, if he has third shot, he'll definitely drive this. Should be a bit quicker. Well, took his closest ball away, and we're not sure if it's uh, Norfolk Island or line one or two now. Back position's all Scotland. So it could be this next ball will be placed about six metres through the head. Might even be three. The second and third shots are a long way away from the jack. Mm, no, there's only two, uh, two red balls in there. Well, I think Phil Jones's bowl on the left of the line, a second shot, and Teddy Evans's bowl. The black ball is just behind the head. Could well be third shot. Measure between... <laughs> Not sure what to play well, now. Uh, yeah. 
I think when you're playing against Darren Burnett, you have to assume that he's going to get it. So you, you play the cover ball. If you're allowing two shots, there's no point. Is it? The game's still young in many ways. It's not even halfway through. So I we have a tendency to go deep. I don't think there's any way to affect the head to take the shot away from Darren Burnett. Well, if he sits the Scottish ball down, that's a good result. Now that will be three. Mm. Well, it's a good result, but I just wonder will it change Darren Burnett's ideas? I, I don't think it will. I still think he'll have a go at it. They're taking a risk here that he's going to miss it. And, and that's OK. You know, it's a decision that has to be made in the context of the match. Mm. But there's a damage limitation here. If he gets that ball onto the jack, it's brought onto the re-spot and he lifts two, maybe three. There's three possible shots he will consider. Backhand draw is on. He's three down. You've got to try to reduce the count. Forehand rest the shot ball and stay or forehand firm. I think it'll be the yeah. third option. So do I. Forehand very firm. Try to take out one, two, hopefully move the jack. Close to it. Oh, I don't believe he got that gap. It didn't look like it existed. Oh, goodness me. That didn't look possible. Thicker edge would have been absolutely perfect. He looked to be bang on target. Mm. <laughs> Agony. Well, multiple scoring ends. Two in a row for Norfolk Island. Just two. Yes, that looks like that back ball was well in there. Two shots, though. Back to back doubles for Norfolk Island. chat time between the lead and skip. What are we going to do? Interesting game, this Norfolk Island-Scotland. Scotland's very much in control, but they've lost the last two ends to two doubles, now from 11-1 to 11-5. Still very much in their control, but they won't want the Norfolk Islands to score any more shots this end. Oh, big crowd here, Broad Beach. It's a fantastic venue, probably one of the best venues that I can remember. I think this is my seventh Commonwealth Games, and there's been some beautiful places to play balls in, but this is just magnificent. Yes, the best greens in the world, the best climate. Play all year round. Good line, just a metre short. The Scots won't be too worried, but I'd be a little bit disappointed in 11 1 and dropping doubles, especially on the last two ends. Phil Jones just asking for clear vision at the back of the rink. Some players take their aiming mark from the far bank, which mm -hmm. Phil Jones obviously does. Plenty of lines on the rink, though. Goodness me, I don't think I've ever seen a bowling game with so many lines on it in my life. 
You know, you can really take your line off those, and it's... Uh, we didn't have those, did we, Shrey? I can't remember lines like that before. Yeah, maybe the middle line, but... Uh, fishing line in Hong Kong. Oh, yes, that was for the outside extremities, wasn't it? Mm. Yes. You could always trip over it, though, if you weren't careful. <laughs> Hong Kong, tremendous tournament. The early days, it's a... I mean, no, it's a bit of a party tournament, I have to say. Well, Hayden Evans is only one down. This, I think this type of shot will suit him and suit his bowl. He gets a late turn. So he needs to come across as it slows. Pick up the jack would be good or sit the bowl. Oh, that's a great bowl. Yep. Hayden, Teddy Evans. Nope, there you go. He hasn't got the shot, I don't think, but, gee, he's got a good position in the head now. Well, just a little touch and move on. That's actually a lot better than what it was. And has held his own ball in the head. Evans will have to play more weight now. Good positive weight now. Looking to make contact with his own last bowl. If he's just a little wide, he'll take out the back Scottish bowl. A lot of instruction going on there. <laughs> In the area for it. Oh, that's a good ball anyway. Got his own, but it's still a good ball. He's pushed it all the way through. Played two good balls there, Hayden Evans. Oh, that's unusual. Darren Burnett's going up to have a chat. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, he's got the shot. Norfolk Island have got second and third. Pretty obvious. Draw a shot on the back end. I'm amazed that they needed a little chat about that, but there you go. I think it is important that the the second, well, there's a lot of balls up there and they can't see it. You know, and he, it's really important that they get the information they need. There's a lot of noise down there. Tell you what, he's in the area for this. Oh, not the gap, is it? Yes, it is. Yes, the ball he was after, the little red one there. That would have been a good position ball. Certainly in the right area with this. Yep, played it well. Got a little thin edge off the front one, but uh, he was very much in the area to get a result. It was a good positive forehand shot. Got a little slide off the front, but had good weight. And teammates are happy. He's got the jack, has he? Now, where's it going? Straight to the Norfolk Island ball. And it's a much safer shot as well. <laughs> it's a better one shot now for Norfolk Island. And uh, <laughs> Ryan Dixon's running up to have a look. He's going to be very pleased with what he sees when he gets to the head.
Well, every player is having an input into the shot selection here. I think it's a forehand draw. Well, the only thing about the forehand is if he leaves the shoulder, it's quite possible to uh, do damage, but he's got good position around the head. You know, he's got his own ball coming in as well. It'll tap on that, wouldn't do any harm. Well, the front red one, he's got the other one to come in off. Even if he drops inside, well, dropping inside would be absolutely perfect. He's played this well, just through the head. I thought he might have stopped about a foot or two earlier. But he's left no catches, that's the important bit. Well, they're certainly showing interest, aren't they? Well, they had second shot, but that's just another's not going to have any effect on things. It's a single shot to Norfolk Island. There's three ends in a row. And you would say after 10 ends at 11-6, well, I'm sure if Scotland will be ecstatically happy about that scoreline. Norfolk Island, the biggest surprise in the semi-finals day. 11-6 down to Scotland, a very much a strong Scottish triple star-studded. But they're within five shots. Green here at Broadbeach just bathed in sunshine now after the overnight rain. It really is starting now to dry the greens out. Conditions are perfect. It's just a gentle breeze, not as stiff as we've had in the last few days. Just a bit anxious with that one. Still, never lost at the back of the head. Covers the respot position. Going well now, Norfolk Island, scoring two doubles in a single in the last three ends, 11-1 to 11-6. They've settled into the game, and, and the Scots are just giving them enough room to, to get inside. Ronnie Duncan, he's been steady without being brilliant. Derek Oliver, he's been thereabouts. And Darren Burnett, we've seen a couple of brilliant shots from Burnett, but it's not perhaps as easy a game as what the Scots would have been hoping for. Yes, considering the way the opposition has played at 11-6, it will probably be thinking that 14-15 or 16-6 really should have been the score. 
All credit to Norfolk Island, they're sticking up the job. Yes, they've only dropped only, but <laughs> two trebles and one double. So they've kept the game reasonably tight. You would have expected the the class of the Scottish players that you know, maybe a couple of fives or a couple of fours, but they've kept the game tight, Norfolk Island. Been quite impressed with Hayden Evans. He's um, started off a little bit nervy, but and I think also the fact that the game's being played at a quite a slow pace, a lot of walking to the head, a lot of instruction. I think that's probably allowed Norfolk Island just to settle in a little bit easier rather than being steamrolled in. When the game is played on a much quicker terms, it's the ends can, oh, that's a disappointing bowl from Hayden Evans. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. We've got four bowls around the jack, three in front and, and one behind. It, it certainly looks like two Scotland at the moment. So just put, looking at the rings there, the. Well, according to our rings, that's three for Scotland. They're and I'm rock solid there. I'm a little surprised that why Hayden Evans just dropped short. It looks like to be up with weight through the middle, trail the jack, take out one of the Scottish bowls. Especially considering that Norfolk Island have the two best back bowls. So a trail of the jack would suit Norfolk Island. Scotland will be trying to change the head up. Oh, that's better. It's opened it up a little bit. I think Ryan Dixon might be well advised just to play firm weight. Rest one of the two Scottish bowls coming in, or better still, trail the jack a couple of metres. Yes, but there's holes and gaps. That's the thing. Wind has <laughs> definitely uh, dropped a little bit. Green's playing at a pace which suits both these teams. He did play a wonderful draw shot on the previous end, Ryan Dixon, but this time I think he'd be well advised to play weight through that gap. Just play it positively. Expect a good result. Trail the jack through for three. Keep the pressure on Scotland. Big crowd behind the Australians match. Now backhand, how much weight? Oh, he looks wide. Mm, he, he is wide for that weight. And that line's more of a draw line, to be honest with you. Good positive shot. Didn't mind that too much, but it's a decent size of target. Once again, a long team discussion. You're holding a couple, maybe three. Just put a bowl at the back, cover the trail. Crazy not to cover the back. You can see where Derek, Oliver, uh, Derek Oliver's standing. That's where he wants the bowl from Burnett. So you can see the right foot there of Oliver. Well, it's going to have to do a bit of holding to get past the front ones. Mm, just made it. Pretty good spot. Yeah. Well, they're obviously expecting Ryan Dixon to play with a bit of weight again, but he's going to have to correct. Doesn't want to overcorrect. That's the problem. Yes, this is a real swooping hand. If you get under the line, which he is, well, he's already turned his back on the bowl. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was saying. You know, you don't want the overcorrect. When you've put the first one all the way through, you have to try and just be positive to it. Well, it's even close for the fourth one. 
Yes, that's a guide there of the rings. It's uh, certainly two. Looks like the bottom one's the third shot at 5.30 and maybe even the one at 8 o'clock. Ryan Burnett, there's no danger at all for Ryan. Drawing on the backhand, last bowl. So, Darren missed the chance. Yep, three confirmed. Just exactly what Scotland wanted to do. After three ends of Norfolk Island scoring, Scotland bring a treble into it. 14-6 after 11 ends. Good bit of encouragement there on the forehand. You've played some good balls out there. From Skip Ryan Dixon, important at Norfolk Island score on this end. Just coming to the two thirds mark on this 18 ends semi final. Mm. Dropped it low. Encouraging that. It's a good adjustment, he was saying. Well, certainly on the outside, a long way away in terms of the jack. A couple of really loose balls there from Phil Jones will not be happy. Well, he won't be happy, but I'll tell you what, Rand Dixon will definitely not be happy, and you, you just want to keep the skip on your right side, don't you? <laughs> In the meantime, they draw up for another shot. I've seen you scowl at the front end a few times, <laughs> and they haven't been giving you a lot of help. Yes, there's a... Not good being a grumpy old skip. Oh, this looks narrow. And short. Apart this from that, a, it was perfect. It was a, <laughs> this is a terrible end at the moment. Scotland holding three. Oliver, he will have no chance, uh, no trouble at all to add a fourth. Here it comes. Just sitting out on the wing. So this might be the end that Scotland have been looking for. A big scoring end. Holding four. Pressure on Hayden Evans. Hmm. Interesting choice to play the backhand. He's on a good line though. It's all about good weight here for Benz. Well, it's not bad. Could have done with uh, getting the inside of that ball and flopping over for the shot, but two and a look for three for Scotland at the moment, and it's all a bit loose, you know. And these these loose heads are dangerous heads. There's holes and gaps, and, and sometimes you score big counts when the balls are not near the jack. Could be still three to Scotland, definitely two. The bottom two. It's just a question between the black bowl on the right. Well, it looks like three to Scotland. So that's a good indication that uh, Darren Burnett, a Scottish policeman, 
shouldn't be feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Drawing for a fourth. Hasn't had to do much really, Darren, in this match. He, and that's the reason I think he's not playing that well. He hasn't been under pressure too much. Yeah, he hasn't needed to play too well. I think there's a, a few gears to go up <laughs> if he absolutely needed to. At the moment, they're in control. It's like a quiet night in the city centre for a policeman. <laughs> Sure, Lindsay and the kids are watching back home, or maybe not. Actually, bearing in mind the time back there, but the, if they can see it, be recording it. Darren's from Arbroath. Good attempt here, just on the inside and fall mm. over well oh. pretty close might be second needed it mm, that's close to shot let to see what darren plays here he, he could punch that ball through but at the same time if he's line one he won't want to touch it on the backhand and get it wrong so he'll play the forehand if the shot's against him he'll push into those two balls in the backhand We'll know from the type of shot who's uh, who's actually lying. Very good draw shot that from Ryan Dixon. It was three down. Might have the shot. Now the skip has to get out of the armchair and earn his keep. Looking for the edge. Oh well, is his own ball going to going to flop down? Looks like it might just drop. Well, he, I think he just grazed that bowl on the way through. And... Yes, it got a little touch. And sometimes that's just enough to move the, move the bowl forward. You can see that movement, and it's trying to fall over. Yeah, certainly on the, on the indoor rinks, that would have easily have dropped down, especially some of the quick ones we have now. I'd expect this bowl to be very close again. He's had one backhand draw shot. The weight was perfect. Just needs to narrow the line. Yep. In the meantime, that ball has dropped in towards the jack. Well, that means it's probably the shot now. Oh, goodness me. You can see the bowl below the jack. It was standing up. Now it's laying flat. So that is the shot bowl. Yep. One to Scotland. Not the easiest way to get the shot, to hit it on the back end and for it to drop forward, but it works. For Scotland, they take the single and go into a lead two thirds of the way through, 15 shots to six. for the first time in this quarter of the semi-final. Phil Jones has dropped his first bowl well short of the jack. Well, you're not going to build heads when you're dropping them short like that. If you're going to miss, better off to miss overweight, not underweight, especially as a lead. Quickly can block up one hand that forehand draw shot's completely blocked now. So even Phil Jones himself with the second bowl of this end is being forced to switch to the other side of the rink. 
And this is the wider drawing side. It's easy to be narrow if you miss your line. Yeah, so at least he's better this time because he's through the jack. And there's always a chance of that ball being used, used later in the end. But the problem is for Norfolk Island, they're really not building heads. And because they're not building heads, they can't score. They're surviving with one ball at the moment. In the meantime, Derek Oliver pops another one in to join Ronnie Duncan's bowls. Bit of noise out there. But once again, Norfolk Island dropping short on this end. Hayden Evans a number of metres short. And Darren Burnett, well... I think he spent some time in traffic control. He's got terrific arm action, hasn't he? <laughs> Direct no, man, that's, in that's, here, that's, swing uh, here, down there, yeah, come through, yeah. stop, slow. That's what he shows people <laughs> when he stops them for speeding. He's waving the arms. He should yeah. be happy with that. It's a counter. It's the second nearest bowl. He's willing it past the jack. Well, I think he was willing it just to come across and make sure there's a gap. You know, holes and gaps. That's what you want. Hayden Evans, he's got a big correction here compared to his first bowl. Oh, he's short again. Mm. That's going to hurt. I don't know. It's a problem. Obviously, the jack can still be seen, but... The difficulty for Ryan Dixon is if he goes chasing this and finds a hole, he could end up losing five or six shots very, very easily. Yes, tactically, there's only one shot on for Ryan, and that's a draw to save. No doubt this man, Darren Burnett, he'll be playing confidently. A little touch on the jack would be good. He'll be trying to rest on the shot bowl. Just over draw weight. Give the bowl a chance. Touch the jacks good. Try not to be too narrow. Well, if you're going to be on the inside, you just have to be a little bit careful with the jack. But he's got the ball. Oh, that's a lot safer. I tell you what, he arrived at that with a little <laughs> bit of weight. Got away with it. And he would have told his teammates he played that too. It was oh, far too heavy. Yeah. If he'd got the jack at this speed, then well, but he got the bowl and then followed through behind the jack. Nestled directly <laughs> behind. Yes, I played that, fellas. I definitely <laughs> played that. Oh, he was four feet heavy <laughs> there, you know. The jack was actually pushing the jack back to the, the Norfolk <laughs> Island ball, but he got away with it. He got the ball solid, and he's made it so much harder here for Ryan Dixon to get second shot, never mind the shot. So I think he's oh. five down. He's on the forehand. It's a drive. Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, this is how you lose a big count here. Driving when you're five down, it's a single bowl target. He's going to have to be very accurate. Well, he looks to be close. Oh, he's hit it! Not only has he hit it, it, but it's <laughs> off the green and it's on the tee. <laughs> what a brave choice of shot! Yeah. He's going to have a bit of space as well. There you go. The heck with being conservative. <laughs> Five down, single bowl target, oh. springs the jack, off the ring. Easy, easy yeah, shot. <laughs> that was a real rule of the dice shot. It, it really was, you know. It was absolutely no right to get that <laughs> in many ways, but he played it very, very well. And I did say at the start, that's his strength. He's known as a, one of the big hitters in Norfolk Island. Loves to drive. Tactically. It was possibly the wrong shot, but he got away with it. Yeah, he played it well, absolutely. It's always the right shot when it's successful. That's why I look at it. Darren's put another one in. There you go. Thank you very much. So how many? It's uh, quite a few. There's definitely three there. Yeah, three shots. Big correction needed, though, to get back down to draw weight on the tee. So I'm just trying to draw this. <laughs> he's riding it. Oh, he's on a perfect line, but we're not getting too much encouragement at the other end. I'm not sure if he's reaching. Yeah, that's the problem. The overcorrection so easy. 
And as it turns out, it looks like a comfortable treble. Yep, three shots confirmed. The scoreboard just ticks over yet again for Scotland. Really got Norfolk Island on the run here. 18-6 after 13 ends. Scotland on the cusp of getting into the final of the men's triples. 12 shots in front, going well. Good start by Ronnie Duncan. And Norfolk Island have played some good balls, but not enough in terms of building heads and the old bad end that they've had of really cost them. That's now four trebles they've lost. You can't do that against a team like Scotland. Well, at least Phil Jones, he wasn't short that time. He's gone three metres past the jack. I always say that in Scotland, because this is really, in my opinion, their national sport. Johnny Duncan popping another one in, best end for a while. You know, they're more successful in, in bowls than any other sport in Scotland. That's why they fund it so well. They're, they're looking for medals all the time and almost always provide them. Uh, unfortunately for Phil, that's just on the inside. The weight was good. Having said that, the rugby team did pretty well in the recent home nations. They beat England. Calcutta Cup brought back to Scotland with that particular one, but uh, didn't really matter. Ireland won it, so there you go. Up to world number two in the rugby, Ireland. Just behind the All Blacks. How do they go curling, Scotland? They do pretty well. They do do well, but not so good on the uh, recent Winter Olympics. Bowls on ice. It is up to a point. Oh, Teddy mm. Evans, he tried valiantly to trail that jack around the corner. Beautiful weight. Gave his bowl every chance and uh, just misses. Yep, this is sweeping across. Oh, oh look at we're that. We're going to see weight soon. Those yeah. three bowls will all go. Well, that's, uh, he's shutting down, choose your hand, mate, and uh, it's a shamrock there. Well, very controlled. Bit of a bad temper draw, if, if at, at all, this one. Well, he wants to spread it, that's okay, that's fine. Yes, he's only just drawing to it. Well, that's right, he's fattened up the target, made it a little bit wider, and uh, Ryan Dixon, I've seen him drive in this match. He'll be driving again. Very unlucky. Beautiful weight on the draw. Still three down. I think even if it had drawn that shot, he would still be vulnerable. There's only one ball there. In the meantime, Darren Burnett's not even looking to cover the back position. Well, you always need to preempt what your opponent is thinking. And I'm sure that Ryan Dixon will be thinking weight and plenty of it. Which means go around the back, cover the back. Open backhand side, passing the head. A drawing to the tee. Yep, they're trying to call it to get past the ball, not quite. I think they made up their mind to play that shot quite late because they were standing up at the head for a long time. And I don't think there's any doubt what uh, Ryan Dixon's going to do. Really, any contact in there, the jack's bound to go. Yep. 
There it is from behind the head. It's a pretty wide target for Ryan Dixon to hit. Yep, get the edge of that will do. There we go. Oh, there's a blue ball went with the jack, but there's a bit of room, a bit of space. Good result. Yeah, wasn't the perfect connection, but at least he hit the head. I think it's that roll off the other ball that was crucial, really. Jack was going back to the blue ball. Looks like Scotland holding a couple of shots. There's still going to be some pressure on Dixon with his last bowl. You would expect Burnett to draw this. Well, there's a metre through. Yes, but it's scoring, and as you know, <laughs> after, Shui, these are never easy when you're under pressure. Especially after a drive, there is a tendency to be heavy on the draw shot following a drive. Well, he's out on a decent track. Don't think he's too far away with this, but it needs to stop. Is it going to stop in time? Not quite. It's rolled out. Has he saved anything? I think it's maybe second shot. Yep, second shot it is, took two off. Good effort. adventurous with the first one well the wind has definitely died quite a lot so it must be very pleasant out there to play so especially for uh, two teams that don't play in very quick greens it's a better opening bowl from phil jones well, he has been struggling the last few ends No, there's the correction. Mm, it's not bad. It's okay. Just a couple of feet. A couple of more ends, and uh, Scotland will be shaking hands on this, I reckon. Yes, they're 13 ahead now. So they pick up a five on this end. The game's over. But uh, yes, they'll be looking to be more than 12 in front after 16 ends. So we're now playing the 15th. If they're more than 12 in front after 16, they will not continue. Hey, you've got your calculator working, mate. It was a bit off yesterday. <laughs> the battery was starting to drain a bit. You've got it going this time. It's always impressive. Just working out how many million you have in the bank. That's all. This looks narrow. Goodness me, that came out of the out of the hand on the narrow side, and it just gets punished there. That's the swinging side of the green.
Well, good ball going in there. Now it's just a matter of Darren Burnett whether he can get to it. He just wants to close heads down. Just rest up to the ball, turn the jack. They're calling this. It must be uh, close to draw weight, but it looks like it's dropping short, and it is. Good ball by Hayden Evans to get one in there. They were once again in a bit of baller. Still are. Rand Dixon needs to get one within a foot or two. Played some really good shots for Ryan Dixon in this semi final. He's uh, had two fantastic drives. Unusual follow through. <laughs> really does concentrate well out of the hand. He's got the same movements every time. Looking they're, good. Yep. They're waving at that one. It just stopped a bit short. If it had been a five or six inches less green, it probably would have made it into the head. Darren will reach through the head now, looking for Hayden Evans's black bowl or trail the jack. Needs to stop. Not quite. It's going to be one to Norfolk Island at the moment. Mm. Surprised he's not playing the other side, to be honest. The jack's a little bit uh, vulnerable on the backhand. He's also got a ball against him coming in. And that's really meant that he couldn't uh, play it with the confidence that he would have wished. Forehand might have been a better option there. Still, one more shot. It's uh, all about respectability now for Norfolk Island. They're not going to win this game. Well, this is an interesting thing. Here we go, Norfolk Island now, 19-7 down with only three ends to go. And they've taken the mat right up the, the rink. Let's see where the jack goes before you start kicking the balls, boys. Yep, good jack. Well done, that's never easy. And the mat's up. Shortest end of the match, 25 metres. Really good opening bowl, Phil Jones. It's a good tactic from Norfolk Island. It's uh, certainly thrown Ronnie Duncan off. He couldn't hold the weight back. Line was good. Now, can Phil Jones replicate his previous delivery? Yep, another good one. Good grouping. Maybe this should have been the length they played earlier. That's exactly. the best, best two bowls of the match for Phil Jones. Left it a bit late in the day. But they haven't had that many opportunities to uh, roll the jack. So any score to Scotland on this end, and the match will be over. Yes, it's... Uh, if you look at it from a mathematical point of view, it's almost level. Well, it is level, effectively. It's a strange way of looking at it, I know, but it, uh, it gives you an indication of how Scotland have been doing. This is close. This is very close. Oh, stoned it. What have they been doing playing the other links? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Who are you playing against with bowls like that? You're going to have the opposition attacking. Uh, two out. Left the zone as well. Good strike over that distance. Stayed down on the shot. Good firm, controlled weight. 
has peeled two out of the head. Was useful. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Darren Burnett just draws away at this. You can see the flags are just starting to uh, calm down. You mentioned that big upset with Norfolk Island in the quarterfinals, beating England 1918. The Cook Islands defeated South Africa in the men's pairs. 15-14. Oh. The Cook Islands <laughs> beat South Africa 15-14. Malta beat Australia in the men's pairs quarterfinal 15-13. There have been and some shocks, no doubt about that, but this one's not. Norfolk Island are doing their best with this, but uh, Scotland have been just a little bit more consistent. In the area, got a chance. Oh, not the gap. Oh, a little touch off the ball, touch off the other one. That's good. That's yep. two. There you go. First wake, second one. Ball runs out. The Scotland ball drops out. Norfolk Island ball drops in. Probably second shot. Darren Burnett. Two balls to win this match on this end. Just running through, I think, is it? Well, it's got a clap. Still one to Norfolk Island. Calling it all the way, but uh, second ball. You might see a drive perhaps with the last bowl if, uh, depending on what Ryan Dixon does with this last bowl on the 16th end. Well, there's nothing there to develop a count. It's just, as I say, about making the score respectable, looking to pick up a double if you can. they hang on to this one Norfolk Island I'll be 11 down with two to play five and a six to tie <laughs> yeah that's an interesting planet you're on there Shui but uh, I'll visit it someday where there's life there's hope yeah and this is oh, just too heavy now what sort of shot does Ryan uh, Darren Burnett play here does he attack the bowl drive it off to win the match. He was so close to the last one. No reason that he can't draw it. They're calling it. They must think it's very close. It's got a bit of work to do to get back from that height. Yep, weight was perfect. Just didn't get back. And it's a stay of execution for Norfolk Island. Picking up a single. Yeah. A couple of sixes, Shuri. Back onto your planet again there. <laughs> yeah, there's more chance of me going to the moon as an astronaut, I think. Well, Ronnie Duncan may be able to help there. He's a rocket science astrophysicist. You can just see it as a headline, can't you? Belfast Bowls commentator goes to the moon. <laughs> Some people think I probably live there anyway. 
Now, Phil Jones, <laughs> they need an absolute minimum of five shots to keep the match alive. Cannot drop short. Yep, good start. Beautiful start. Well, this will be a mix and match end, no more than that. It's a dolly mixture end. That's what we call it back home, that's what I call it back home, a dolly mixture end. We have dolly mixtures, which are sweets that are mixed around everywhere. That's this. Match everything, but make sure that the bowls are are not in a situation of being grouped together, and this one's short by the looks of it. Oh, he cannot drop short, Phil. Now, that's every other bowl for Norfolk Island has to count. And Ronnie Duncan's first bowl is just over maybe 30, 35, 40 centimetres away from the jack, just over a foot, so it's going to be <laughs> almost impossible. He's a bit quick with this one. But only a foot. <laughs> <laughs> you see Darren Burnett down there all putting his hand down all the rest. Slow, <laughs> slow, slow. But they're not they're not quick, these greens, and uh, they do slow up pretty quickly when the ball's going down. There's no real running finish on them, but they are very, very good. Good ball here. Yeah, that's what they need. Well, there's two of the five they need. There's no. always one spoil sport, isn't there, at the party? Yeah. And here it, here here it, it is. is. <laughs> That's it. End of party. Bye-bye. No way that ball's going anywhere. That's the end of the match, effectively. Played well. Derek Oliver. He has. He's been in really, really steady in this match. Beautiful weight. Knew he had to just arrive to the pack or get the jack. Got both. Perfect. Absolute perfect shot. Hayden Evans, he should be really well proud of his efforts in this Commonwealth Games, men's triples. Oh, absolutely. You know, on paper, a lot of people might have been thinking this could easily have been a, a 30 shots to three match, and it hasn't been. It's 19-8. They've played some great bowls in this tournament, Norfolk Island. And they'll go back and should be very proud of their efforts. And of course they'll uh, they'll have the bronze match to play for. I tell you what, mate, can you imagine they go back with the bronze? Well, I, I think they deserve, you know, to have a public holiday yeah. named in their honour. This is the biggest performance ever for Norfolk Island men's triples to beat England in the quarter final. And here they are in the semi-final Commonwealth Games men's triples and, as you said, still got an opportunity to take home a bronze. I would just give it to them. <laughs> just for sheer effort. Well, it's not that long ago when the, the two losing semi-finalists shared a bronze each. Yeah, well, well. So nowadays they have to play off. Wasn't it my day then? He had to play it what, off. What is Darren? I, I, no what is Darren no. concerned about here? No, he's, he's oh, oh, he's played oh. a runner. I don't believe it. <laughs> he wants the shot. Oh, he's got the shot. Well, no, I think he's one down, but he's got balls all around <laughs> it, and I can only assume it's a practice shot. But my goodness me, you've played 17 ends. You don't need a practice shot. And they're walking up to the head. Oh, but come on, guys. Both skips are walking yeah. to the head. There is no possibility whatsoever of scoring five for Norfolk Island. Houdini would have given up magic if he was in this position. There's no way he could get out of it. Oh, there's a little trot back. I think if I'd have been Darren <laughs> Burnett, I'd have carried my ball up with me. Because there's no way he's going to have to play it. Maybe there's something going on there that we don't know about.
There's no way that Ryan Dixon can make five shots with this bowl. Well, they're looking at it intently. Okay, he's got the jack. One down. One Shake down. hands. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, All over. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> they were just teasing us in that last down. There's no doubt about it. But uh, Scotland, comprehensive win in the end. 20 shots to eight over Norfolk Island. A very fighting performance by Norfolk Island. And they'll come back for the bronze match, of course. But goodness me, Scotland did play well. Good, consistent stuff. A match that, uh, on paper, looked to be all one-sided, as we see David Gurley coming on to uh, congratulate his team. He's the team coach. George Sneddon as well, another gold medalist from many years ago for Scotland. Confirmation of the score, 20 shots for Scotland, eight shots for Norfolk Island. Scotland go through to the final. I'll tell you what, they're gonna be hard to beat as well. Big crowd just now starting to dissipate after that match. And this beautiful surroundings of Broad Beach. Very hard to beat this. There we go. Early days, Scotland started to take a few bowls out. Big drive from Ryan Dixon. Bowl out. Gets a couple of that end. And Scotland though, well, they were doing everything. Ball out from the edge of the green to pick up a three. One of the many threes that they scored in this match. And in the end, they were just too consistent for uh, Norfolk Island. But Norfolk Island can hold their head up high. They uh, have played very well in this event. and got another match to go. But it's Scotland against Australia. How tasty is that for this evening? A quiet little game to look forward to, I think. Uh, it's hard to beat whenever you've got two of the very top nations in the world going head to head for a gold medal here on the Gold Coast. Sunshine, we will leave you now and you can join us shortly for the next session in this beautiful part of Australia.